Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and a brand new video on Marvel Contest of Champions. This video is all about the Collector. Now, if you haven't seen MCOC Mods video about the Collector, then we're going to go over it so I don't feel that you're going to be left behind. If you've just started Act 5 or if you're in a point where you haven't got to Act 5 yet, don't worry, don't rush through the game. Take your time, enjoy it. But if for those that are interested in Act 5 and also the fact that they've completed Chapter 1 and want to go into Chapter 2, well, Chapter 2 is on the way and your boss is the Collector. It's very easy to pinpoint because on the silhouettes, as you can see to the left, there is the Collectors, the Grand Masters in the centre and we still don't know who the final one is for the final chapter. There's anyone's guesses. I have done a video on this, which I'll link in the description below, which I go over theories of different people's that uh, it could be. I mean, because of the struggle between the Collector and the Grandmaster from the original comic book series back in the early 1980s, it could be death or a version of death. Death is female, male, anything more than likely female. And that will probably be the end boss. Don't quote me on it though, but it seems more likely because it's similar to the comic books. But with all that being said, let's just go over to MCOC Mods video and talk about the character. So to start off with, the collector gets this kind of unclassified class to kind of, if you get my drift, it could be a good argument to say that in future we could get characters that are elders, which the collector, the grandmaster are. And also Celestial. So this class could be that for that. And we could increase the classes. Rather than say Cosmic. You could have things like a Celestial class. Or an Elders class. Based on these kind of uh, almighty beings of Celestial bodies. So that's a good start. All ratings are pretty strong. This is a rank 5, 65, 5 star. So expect something quite powerful. Block proficiency good, armor rating good. Uh, however, I think that there'll be little things to make the character even better when it comes to, say, local node bonuses in Chapter 2. So look out for maybe a little bit more punishment than what we're reading at the moment. The collector specials don't have any kind of meaning behind them. So usually specials are called the so-and-so's punch or the doo-wop the flibby doo-wop. And the ones aren't mentioned here. All we know is that the L1 is stun, 90% chance, chance stun for 3.5 seconds. We've then got power lock off the L2. And then the final one, L3. It just basically says that you're going to die. Uh, this attack instantly knocks out the opponent. So, good. As expected, because this is very early days and early stages, and I'm not sure if this has been implemented or they're running or testing Chapter 2 at the moment, there's not a bio around the collector. Looking forward to that, really, to see what they're going to put in. One thing I really think Kabam need to do is increase the bio. Kind of, even if the, every time a lot of characters get put into the game, there is a large space to add stuff into the window, and the collector will have either information with, it, with regards to who he is and what he does, with obviously collecting and the um, the things that he collects, or there's stuff with regards to his relationship with the elders of the universe. Finally got there, knew what they were now. Okay, this is what I feared the most, and the Elder Physiology, because it gets a regeneration over 10 seconds, 10,668.62. This is based on level 200. Oh dear, and then it, when it gets worse, is uh, <laughs> is an unending tenacity, similar to Agent Venom, with tenacity is allowing him, allowing him to take off a debuff effect. It is a 55% 50, chance to shrug off any debuff effect instantly. And you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking guillotine. I'm thinking applying in the, the L2 and then punishing. However, though, 55% chance. And you know how luck goes every time that you apply in. There's it's a good chance that that won't land. So that could be a little bit disappointing because I was going, yes, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use guillotine for that. But um, oh dear. The Collector taps into some Omega level relic powers that at certain thresholds for health loss, <laughs> look, you can even see it for yourself. 70% 70, 70 armor rating, boom. 55% Collector special attacks become unblockable. Yep. Um, immunity. The Collector becomes immune to bleed, poison, and stun power lock debuff effects. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, 
The collector periodically becomes unstoppable for 3.5 seconds. Great. Oh dear. And then overload relic. The collector periodically activates the astral overload, recovering 9,282 health over 15 seconds and increasing armor rating by 1,000. Man, this is gonna be this is gonna be good. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, but at the same time, people have been asking for that. They'll be going, yeah, well, I they go, I want difficulty, and it's like this is you know you you've been answered here by this. So changing the strategy at different periods of the battle, you're gonna have to then watch out for um, the shatter relic. It will come up with shatter relic on the opponent, and then you're gonna have to then think about what your next course of action is. Because then uh, an aggressive play may then change. You've got to change your passive play. Your strategy largely changes throughout the battle. But you're going to have to time that well. So this, this is going to be where a lot of people are going to go, this is challenging. Fun, but challenging. The Collector also gets a little bit of a buff when it comes to special attacks from the Isosphere. And you get a debuff yourself in that the presence of the Isosphere slowly weakens the Collector's opponent. So you're going to be taking 2.5% for every 5 seconds on your ability accuracy. And that's uh, of a maximum is going to go down as an 80% reduction in total. Oh dear, well this is going to be a lot of fun. So this is the Collector in action, he's got a little bit of levitation, spends a lot of time like when he's hit he's down on the ground. It's kind of going along the same lines as this elder, strong elders. That's the L1 being put in. And you can see that stun effect, which is great. And if you have like, if, if you played this character and you had Stupefy, then it's going to be mint. But you may have to change your utilities around in order to kind of reduce down that stun effect, especially if that is, well, you're going to have to use that as being the evadable thing. You're always going to have to evade that L1 because here's the L2. Because we don't see any kind of swipe back, we can't see the motion of distance. Like, is it going to be three hard evades away in order to get away from it? What's going to be the lay of the land? We saw the power lock being put in, so Thanos wasn't able to gain any power. And here is the third special, which is meant to instantly, yeah, kill the player. And encase them in a little crystal, so that is pretty cool. In the battle we saw the protection relic was the only relic that we saw being activated, so the collector can no longer take more than 3% of max health as damage from any single source. Unfortunately, obviously, the battle is all about the collector being a usable character, an MCOC mod. Fighting Thanos, the difference is that when we come to fight the collector, I'm pretty certain it's going to be a little bit more difficult and also it would be nice to see the breakdown of the relics so basically when we get the character down to about 25% uh, 10% what kind of an enemy is he going to be especially if you're not able to apply certain effects which would be helpful uh, you're able to still buff similar to Loki or you'll be able to punish the character for regening so therefore you're using guillotines L2 and a whole host of mystic characters and maybe even extreme bleeders and poisoners to kind of really get an idea of how unbeatable is he is he is he like like superman yeah okay he's all powerful but he can still bleed out these are kind of things that we really need to find out and hopefully when we get chapter two that it isn't overly difficult but still is fun and challenging at the same time so thank you very much for watching this video as an overview of the Collector as the Chapter 2 boss. As things come out, I'm sure we'll be covering the information of the character and maybe ways around and hopefully ways around trying to uh, to defeat him. So thank you very much for watching this video. Like, subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions content. And as always, I shall catch you on the flip side. Bye bye for now.